ever had those snow plows where it was like really dogging it when you're trying to go up and trying to maneuver? Yeah, I have, Stan. Oh, really, Tim? All right. better than any plow I've driven. I love this controller. Okay, Shane knows more about snow plows than Anybody, I mean, look at all of these snow plows you install. Don't be putting me up on a pedestal like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you guys, we're gonna take a real close look at the Snow Dog Plow, which is one of the newest plows that I just put on my truck. We're also gonna show you guys how to set and adjust your snow plow, whether it's a Snow Dog, Western Boss, or any V plow to get the right attack angle to make sure that you're not prematurely wearing out your cutting edges, which can be a problem with some of the other brands. Without wasting any more time, let's get into this thing. Oh, and I've got to introduce you to Shane. He is the chief installer at Chris Steel, which is one of the biggest snowplow installation and truck body modification companies in Minnesota and probably in the Midwest. So let's just do this thing. Can you do a demonstration of how to hook and unhook this snowplow for us? Sure. Is this a one-man job or a two-man job? Everything's a one-man job. All right. Yeah, it's all, it's all about consumer. <laughs> it's, on, it's on, Shane. Let's um, hope you have a smooth, smooth transition there. It, oh, yeah. And uh, the other thing I was going to do, too, is if uh, it'd be cool, I was going to grab Will just uh, to run through some stuff on yeah, there. So yeah, let's run through it. Yep. Absolutely. Because yep. we're running through it not just for me, but for the guys that are thinking about buying one. Yep, absolutely. Let's do it. All right. So first thing you always want to make sure is the kickstand is down so it doesn't come climb back. These ones you just pull back on this lever here and these adjust. It's pretty much adjust for where you need it right now. But. Okay. You're going to want to keep your truck in float. So where's float? All right, so you're on, so you're gonna go down until it turns blue. Uh, the blue. Okay, that's here. float. Down until it turns blue is float. Got it. This is all the way down. Otherwise, you might struggle getting that back up and down. Okay. On a hook your pin, just locks it so this doesn't move while you're plowing. Okay. So that you just pull out. So you rocked it forward just to release the down pressure on it. Yeah, just the uh, head gear weight will cause it to wedge a little bit. And there she is, she's off. So, so can you actually back it away, Will? I want to actually see how this. I want to actually get a kind of a, a an idea of the separation, and then I want to watch you hook it back up. No pressure, Will. Two hundred and sixty thousand people on YouTube are not watching you right now, Will. Oh no! I think they like that when I give them when I tease them. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Don't do anything wrong. So you've got dielectric grease in there as we probably 
all know, but why not repeat? Simple lesson. So when you store your snowplow, we always dielectric grease all of the connections unless there's something new or better that you recommend, Will. No, we just use dielectric grease. Seems okay. to work really well. The brown dielectric grease. Brown? Yeah, it's got a it's got like a little oil base to it. Okay. If you ever find that stuff, that's the best stuff you'll ever use. What what brand name do you use? Uh I can tell you one that uh, they sent with the plows, uh, Fisher would send the brown stuff with. Um, okay. Otherwise, there's a few different ones out there. I, I'm not sure what the brand is off the top of my head. But. So brown dielectric grease, if you guys know what the brand name is or what you recommend, put it in the comments down below. I guess that's, that's better. So you hooked the fittings back up. Yep, and they just kind of lock together here on the little tab there to hold them tight. Okay, so. well, let's back it away, and I want to actually take a look at the actual connection method so we can get a clear shot of what that looks like. Perfect. So that bar across gives you more connection, surface connection area, or tell me about that, will you, Will? That bar just kind of helps. This is what that bar sits on. Latches on it here. Okay. So that just gives you the pushing strength across there, and then you got your top pins to lock into there. So then your pins there line up with the hole right there. Yeah. Okay. Is that got that really grip on it, you know? Oh, um, yeah. I was going to say, is that. It's made so you take your foot and push against it and if there's a little bit of snow on there it helps grip it okay so yeah that's got a, it that's a new feature that they started coming out with in the last two years so the connection method that is this is very similar to what the heinecker connection method is except they had this little thin bar right and i'm not picking on heinecker love my heinecker snow plow, but they had this little thin bar and every time i go to kick it which where would my foot go over the bar or under the bar so then you know what's kicking the bar Shit. My shin didn't like hooking up the Heinecker snowplow. My shin hated hooking up the Heinecker snowplow. Let's bring her back together, Will. Think you can do it in one time? I'm doing my best going. <laughs> in automatically will when you lifted I slid it up this pin so when you have it down this pin will actually overlap this tab okay and on this side you can flip it out so then it's spring loaded so that pin will hit so when you push it up it'll automatically drop into the hole it'll lock in for you does the other side do it or just the driver's side if you set both of them you get to walk around so well, So both of them are the same? Yep. And you can see, you can see how it kind of, that side's holding it in, but when it's down, it'll still catch this here. Okay. So you can flip it out and it'll stop, and then all you have to do is push it in and it'll automatically go out because it's spring loaded. Okay. Okay, one of the things that Will kind of screwed up and forgot to tell me about is they've got an actual switch right on the back of the plow that lets me adjust it up and down. So if I don't get the plow just right when I'm trying to hook it up, instead of wrestling it into place, I can hit this switch and the blade will actually angle the back part of the plow, letting it get right into that sweet spot without going back and forth from the plow to the truck. That's pretty darn cool. Bad on you, Will, for forgetting to tell me about that. And make sure your safety pins are in. And make sure your kickstands look back up. Keep your locks. 
it's spring loaded. So you gotta pull up on this. Push down on it. Perfect. Can you show us how the controller works on this one? I'll go on this side of the truck. Well, it's been about as dry of a winter as we've experienced in Minnesota and I know in a lot of parts of the country, but the little bit that I have had a chance to use this controller since initially making this video, I seriously love this controller. It is so easy and intuitive to use. And that was one of my big, biggest pet peeves about other controllers, is I don't want something that I gotta ever look at. I wanna be able to put my finger on it and just figure it out. I mean, I can do it with my TV remote. Why can't I do it with my snowplow controller? The on button is down on the bottom, got it. So on and off, yeah, I gotta hold that or anything? Nope, just click it and okay. the light will come on. Okay. And then you get up and you press the top one, you get both of them. Bottom one, they both retract. Okay. And then you have individual. And then that does the individual on that side. And these bottom corner arrows will retract. And then these ones will give you, when the plow is one wing's all the way out, one wing's retracted. Is that as high as it'll go? So what you want to set your chains at, you can definitely chain it a little bit higher if you want. Um, you know your parking lots are going to have a lot of ups and downs. Some guys like a little more slack in their chain for the float. Yeah. Um, it's really personal preference on what you'd like, but we can definitely chain it so it goes a lot higher for you if you'd like. So we can see how close we are right now. <sighs> We're going to alter the carry height on it. Hey Shane, when we, all, when we chain it up, are we going to be Messing with any of the attack angles or anything like that? Yeah, attack angles set basically off your quadrants and everything else. So all you're doing is changing how much how much distance your float's gonna have when it drops down. So Okay, so let's show these guys how we do that. So you put it in float, right? Correct. Well, okay. So now this has a chain that lifts it up and down, and some people have heard say, well that's old school technology. Yep, and it works and actually has an advantage today because other systems will use a hydraulic cylinder for both up and down, and if that hydraulic cylinder ever fails, the plow goes down and stays down. With the chain, if that system ever fails, you can lift the plow up, you can chain it up, and you can drive it to a repair shop. A little bit easier to work on that way when you can actually get it inside someplace warm with some tools. So you get enough because you get a full chain and around it through. So if you do need a little bit more, and you will need up having to do that if you want a little bit more. I got one link out of it, did you? Got one link, so we're not gonna see a ton. But we got more. Okay, so that's pretty simple to do. Absolutely. On the Western, I know that I had a lot of wear on the cutting edge, and people were saying, well, the installer didn't set the right angle when he was putting the blade on, and... Uh, Westerns are a little... Uh, are they finicky like that? Or? Well, they're kind of set. I mean, most they don't have the adjustments up and down for the most part you can do it on the plow you can adjust the plow to it okay um but it all changes with if guys switch out their tires a leveling kit anything like that um biggest thing that you want to do is set it you know in your in your v in your scoop and make sure your cutting edges are touching all the way through equally and you don't have any you know flare up flare down too that's a big thing as well okay so, so that's the main thing so when you guys are setting your plow can we actually show how you guys have this plow set uh, to make sure that you got the right angle? Because I actually want to know how these guys can do it. So when you guys buy one, whether you buy these guys or boss or whoever, you can just check to see how it goes for yourself. Scoop it all the way out. So first thing we do is scoop it all the way out. You can do it either way. You can set it all the way through. Okay. As you can see, other than right there, it's flat all the way through no light no nothing when they're off you'll actually have it where the ends of the ends of the cutting edge are 
there's a gap there. Okay. Or if it's vice versa, you'll see that we're right in the middle of the center section here. You're gonna have a you're gonna have a gap in here. That determines which way the adjustments need to go when you when you're setting the truck height or anything like that. Okay, I see a minor gap right there. Does that make a difference? That's because it's sitting on a little bit right here. Sitting on the... Yeah, okay. just a little bit. So, uh, and that could be imperfections in the concrete because I see some over there as More, well. Yep. So... Yeah, it's that's one of the hardest... It, it's very noticeable when it's way off. Okay. You know? And there's a little bit too... There's very minor adjustments that to get that out, you don't need to... I, Okay. You definitely don't need to worry about that. Okay. There's no shoes on this one. No. Uh, so a lot. Of, it's a lot of manufacturers have been going to. If you want shoes, you can add that on. But I would say probably 70% of the people that we do plows for don't want them because they want as much cutting power as possible. I can't run shoes. Uh, it'll save your plow life. It'll extend your cutting edge forever compared to running without shoes. But when you run with shoes, you also have that little minutia of snow that's left behind. And that, that minutia of snow, especially in Minnesota where we get big temperature fluctuations, freezes, thaws, freezes, thaws, and becomes a slick of ice. And that's a slip and fall hazard to be waiting. So we've got to scrape down to as bare a concrete as possible every single time we go out to an event. We can't have shoes. The other thing is uh, the science behind it, pounds per square inch. If you take and you start taking away how much force is on the ground, it's kind of like trying to cut with a dull razor. You know, it's not going to do nearly as well. It's when you guys start doubling up on cutting edges and things like that, you take away the scrape power. So one thing great about these is they actually have a really nice size cutting edge on them, so they it does cut down really fast and really nice. Okay, I don't see a center puck in there. No, and usually, from what we've seen, they haven't really had a, a real need for it. The snow when you're pushing, it kind of just wedges up there. They had, at first that was a concern, and we haven't had an issue with that. So. No dribbles? You're not noticing much with dribbles? If you're doing really, really fine snow and you're leaving it straight, you will see just, I mean, just a little bit, but so far I've kind of seen that across the board. Um, but if you're doing cleanup and you're in scoop, I haven't, I haven't seen a, I haven't had any complaints and I haven't seen a lot of Okay, so I see now that we've got this in full V yep. and we're touching all the way across. That tells you that your angle is right? Correct. Okay. Otherwise, if it was off a little bit, you'd either have your back of your weights sitting up or when you set it down, the front would not set down completely all the way. Okay. All right. Anything else we need to know about snow plows in general? I don't know if you got enough film. <laughs> Here's one. You need snow. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't had much of that. Will, any last thoughts? No, I'm interested to see how you like it. Okay. Um, I think we're good. All right, well, I hope this video has helped you out. Thanks to these guys from Christeel. Oh, let's Thanks. go plow some snow. To me, it's bang for the buck. What's gonna give me my biggest ROI or my return on investment? And that's why I chose Snow Dog because it's got the lowest price to get into the, your foot into the door for a stainless steel blade in comparison to other stainless steel comparable blades. But you're also going to have the same quality because this Snow Dog that I've discovered after doing my research of today is not the same Snow Dog company that it was five years ago. They're continually evolving and they're improving their products and it's noticeable and that's why I put this on so that I could show you guys this Snow Dog Blade. Not today, but in a year. I'm going to be 
using and abusing this snow dog blade as much as I possibly can, whatever mother nature allows me to, and showing you guys how well this holds up in comparison to my other blades out there. So make sure you guys stick around because this video was just the beginning. If these snow dogs hold up, you guys are gonna know about it. And if they don't, you guys are gonna know about it. God bless you guys and go get them. And look at these other videos right here. Woo! That was my wrestler impression. Who was that? Was it Ric Flair? I think it was Ric Flair. Woo!